Hello everyone! This is Princess Perrin with more Final Fantasy XIV. So it is that time of the year in which we celebrate another anniversary of A Realm Reborn. And once again the quest of the Rising takes place or starts here at a set in Olga. And the quest giver is Nanamji. So let's start him. Are you familiar with the name Loiseau Le Feuillet? Of course I am! Of course you are, of course you are! Forgive me my suddenness. I am Nanamji Nanamji, a budding writer and I seek to pen a biography of the great man. In particular, I wish to cover his movements leading up to the calamity. And to that end, I have requested an interview with Immortal Flames. He served the Oars in Alliance as a tactician, you see. So there ought to be someone in the order who had dealings with him. And while my request has thankfully been accepted, there's one problem. I don't have much experience conducting interviews, and I'm worried whether I'll be able to do a proper job. As an adventurer, you doubtless use the dealing with people. Thus, I would like to ask you to accompany me, in the capacity of an assistant. It would be tremendously reassuring to simply have you watch and if you're amenable, afterwards I'd like to interview as well for your own impressions. For your troubles, I'll be certain to credit you as a collaborator. So please, won't you help me with my biography that the memories of the calamity might be preserved for future generations? I'm in your debt! To begin with, please come with me to Camp Tribone in Eastern Talon. That's a place I'd like to visit ahead of the interview. I haven't set my food in there in such a long time. Champion of Eorzea! Small wonder I felt you were dependable. With one such as you helping me, everything will surely go well. But getting back to business, the interview I've arranged is with an officer of the Immortal Flames. There's still time, however. I thought we'd pay a visit to the nearby graveyard first so I can explain my motivations for the biography. I come from a small village near the Katano Flats. It was burned down in the Calamity, and those who died were laid to rest here, my parents among them. It's hardly an uncommon tale. After the Dread Primal emerged from Dalamud, he unleashed fiery devastation across the lands and breadth of Eorzea. But as much as the Calamity has scarred the realm, it is quickly becoming just another event in the history books. Beyond occasionally giving thanks to the Archons that Eorzea was saved, people spare little thought. But when you've lost so many loved ones, it's hard to feel that anything was saved. That's why I wish to know more about Loisieux. By learning about his part in Eorzea's salvation, I hope that I will attain closure. That's my motivation for writing the biography. Hmm. 
Now then, in preparation for the interview, let's review what is known about our subject. It's difficult to define exactly when the seventh umbral calamity was set in motion. Many historians, however, point to the Empire's Meteor Project, which sought to bring Dalamud down upon Eorzea. It was the year 1562 of the Sixth Astral Era. Seeking to combat the Imperial threat, Noiseau founded the Circle of Knowing, an order whose objective was the preservation of Eorzea. Through its member, the Archons of Charlian, the Circle worked to unite the nations of Eorzea in common cause. The result was the formation of the Grand Companies in the three city-states, the Immortal Flames, the Order of the Twin Adder, and the Maelstrom. None of these would exist now were it not for their efforts. And then, in the year 1572, when the situation was coming to a head, Loisois himself made a journey to Eorzea in secret and engaged with each of the nations. What took place during that time is what I seek to learn in the interview. The man we're due to meet is the contact for the Free Brigade, a unit formed of adventurers and he apparently had Loisois assistance for a mission. The meeting place is Highbridge, to the northeast. It's more or less time now, so let's make our way there. You're the ones who seek an interview. I must say I wasn't expecting to see the champion of yours here. Yeah? I'm Nananji Nononji, the writer who made a request and Judith kindly accompany me for the interview. I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy schedule to humor me. Come now, no need for thanks. Like everyone, I hold Loisois in the highest esteem. If you wish to know about him, and Aubrey is always glad to oblige. Flame salute. Without further ado, then let us begin. My understanding is you had dealings with Loisois. Could you please tell me the details? As you know, our grand companies were formed thanks to the Circle of Knowing. It wasn't until Dalamud began turning red that Loisois first appeared. It began with the word that an elderly Ellison man had come to Gridania, who held the key to vanquishing primals. Upon learning of this, I sent an adventurer of the Free Brigade to make contact with him. I later learned that the Maelstrom and the Order of the Twin Adder had done the very same. At the time, our companies weren't yet collaborating. Each one only thought to stay ahead of the others. If truth be told, at first we didn't think much of Oazua, only that he was a leader of scholars who studied peculiar prophecies. But when the adventurer reported back, our opinion of the man completely changed. Spellcraft, Wazwa, had opened the way into Ifrit's domain, and by the hand of dauntless adventurers, the Lord of the Inferno was brought low. 
Alas, many defeats preceded that victory. It was reported that countless charred corpses lay strewn in the ball of embers. Now, the mission also yielded a shocking revelation. Following the battle, Legatus Nelfondanus of the 7th Imperial Legion appeared and told the adventurer that the hour of reckoning was at hand, that Dalamud would soon fall and cleanse the land. That was when we realized that the Empire was behind the Red Moon's anomaly. the meteor project. So it doesn't seem like you had much to act upon. <laughs> As you say, afterwards we scrambled to learn all we could about the project. For a blessing, we had a cooperation of a Garlean defector, Sid Garland, whom you know well. He revealed the details of the project, that it utilized a transmission tower to pluck Dalamut from the heavens, all for the purpose of purging us savages from the realm. I could continue telling what I know, you what I know, but from this point on, there is someone better suited than I am. If you are interested, I would be glad to introduce you to this individual. What say you? Well now, we'd be keen to speak with this person indeed. Very well, I will send word to the Adder's Nest. If you could take yourselves to Apkalo Falls, I will arrange for a meeting there. To go to such lengths to help us. I can't say how grateful I am. Do not mention it. As I said, I hold Wazwa in the highest esteem. He was the one who brought our three nations together, and nothing would please me more than for him to be remembered. Well, Past time I return to Ulda, I pray that the coming interview bears you fruit. That shield is so small. The lieutenant certainly has a great respect for Wazwa. Thanks to him, we have another promising interview. Come, let's head to Gridania, where the Archon had sojourned. I still remember the very first times I saw those huge crystals glowing in the night. <laughs>
another lieutenant. I was told there were those who wished to learn about Loiswa. And who should one of them be but the champion of Eorzea? Well met, I am Lieutenant Cyril Falke of the Order of the Twin Adder. at your service. Thank you for sparing the time to speak with us. Think nothing of it. I must say though that Lieutenant Aubrey chose the perfect spot for the subject matter. Roiswa spent much time in rumination here in the days before the calamity. We Gridanians being somewhat reserved by nature at first, the citizens kept their distance. But in time, people warmed to him. He patiently lent an ear to their troubles, healing hurts and offering counsel and gradually earned their trust. To ignore the plight of those are, one might conceivably say, it is not wisdom. Indolence. Roiswa speak those words and lived up to them. He was an epitome of Shardy and Sage, and I recall myself being moved. Now, shortly after we had become aware of the meteor project, the hamlet of Korimil was attacked by the primal Garuda. Both soldiers and civilians were among the casualties. The Order of the Twin Adder moved to vanquish the Primal, but we were not alone. Through Luanzoa mediation, we had the support of not only our sister grand companies, but capable adventurers the realm over besides. Using an artifact known as the Vortis Feather, the Archon opened the way for a band of adventurers to sally forth into Garuda's turbulent domain, where they felt the fearsome being. Defeat, however, the Primal's dispersed ether did not return to the land. Instead, it was absorbed into the Red Moon Dalamut. And when the Empire constructed a new base in Mordana, the Elder Seeds here saw the need for decisive action and put forth a proposal. The former reformation of the Oasian Alliance, which had for so long lain dormant. The initial response from the other nations was lukewarm at best. They felt that the burden to be borne by each party was excessive, and they were loath to do aught that would place them at a disadvantage against their rivals. But the revelation that a lunar transmitter had been erected in the Imperial base prompted a change of heart. The tower controlled Dalamut's ascent. If it could be destroyed, then the meteor project would be forestalled. After having constantly been on the back foot, our nations were motivated to join hands. The twin might strike a decisive blow against the enemy. Thus was the Oasian Alliance reformed, as the Circle of Knowing had hoped. At the same juncture, Roiswa was asked to join the Alliance as a tactician. And in that capacity, he provided sage counsel to our heads of state. So, although he was at first treated with wariness, Lazoa earned our trust through his actions and paved the way to enduring cooperation between our nations. Indeed, but it not for him, we would all have perished divided. We would we owe Lazoa a great debt. Now then, I expect you might be interested in hearing about the operation to destroy the Lunar Transmitter. But for that tale, I would recommend you seek out another, a decorated soldier who actually took part in the operation. Although a hardened warrior, she is quite friendly and should be glad to regale you with her experiences. Shall I send her a word on your behalf? I'd be duly grateful. Very well. If you could take yourselves to Maelstrom Command in Limsa I shall see to it that she knows to expect you. With that, I shall take my leave. I pray that the biography is success. Well, 
Well, they're all very friendly. Everyone has been more helpful than I had dared to hope. It seems Lazoa had quite an influence on others. That interview gave us some valuable insights into his character, and I'm eager to see what we learn in the next. Come, let's head to Limsa Luminsa. There it is, the Maelstrom Command. Shall we then? Dude! Ever a sign for sore eyes! And you must be Nanaji. Rashad Freak here to your service. I understand you wish to hear about the operation to destroy the lunar transmitter. Indeed, I am penning a biography of the Archon Wazwa, you see, for which I am interviewing people who had dealings with him. I truly appreciate your time. <laughs> You're very welcome. I would be glad to assist even if it wasn't a request from Lieutenant Folk. Now then, to continue where he left off. It was shortly after the Eosian Alliance was formed, our scout scouts returned with word that the 7th Legion had activated the lunar transmitter in their fortress in Mordorna. Now known as the Castrum Sentry, the fortress was originally called Castrum Novum, before the Fourthians restored and renamed it. It was in order to break through its defences and destroy the transmitter that our three nations joined hands. And we were determined to, to succeed. The strategy that Loiseau proposed was elegant in its simplicity. While our main force drew the Guardians' attention, with an all-out siege, an elite band of adventurers would infiltrate the Castrum and make for our objective. We had entrusted adventurers with reading as of the primals. Now we entrusted them with the very fate of Eorzea. I still remember the operation as if it were yesterday. Though we met with fierce resistance, we fought more fiercely still. No matter the cost, we had to ensure that the adventurers had a chance to strike at the transmitter. And when the messenger arrived bearing word that it had succeeded, <sighs> it still makes my heart sore to recall that moment of triumph. That day we learned that by standing together, the people of Eorzea could oppose even the might of the Empire. 
Tis no exaggeration to say that that victory paved the way for Eorzea's future. Without it, there would not have been an Operation Archon. Alas, it wasn't all glad tidings. For though we destroyed the transmitter, Nell Van Dan has appeared and claimed that he no longer needed a device to bring down Dalamud. That he himself had the power to do so. So long as Van Dan has lived, the threat of destruction remained. And so branding him an enemy to all life in Eorzea, the nations of the Alliance undertook a desperate manhunt. At length they located him in Curthus, and sent their greatest warriors to hunt him down. Leading that formidable band was the adventurer whom they called the Warrior of Light. And though no records remain of the fierce encounter, one thing is certain. At battle's conclusion, Nell Fandanus was brought low. As you know, however, our woes did not end with the White Raven, for Noiswa and his disciples determined that Dalamud would continue to fall. In a last-ditch bid to prevent the realm's annihilation, the Circle of Knowing issued a request to the Eorzean Alliance to secure the Cartano Flats where the Red Moon was expected to crash. It was no simple task, for the entirety of the Seventh Legion had amassed in the Cartano. But it was necessary in order to perform a ritual to stop Dalamud. A ritual that invoked the power of the Twelve. So it was that the Battle of Cartano was joined. And I dare say you know how the tale continues. To everyone shocked, the Elder Primal Bahamut emerged from Dalamud and proceeded to unleash his fury upon the realm. Hmm. Aye. And though all bore witness as Loiseau initiated the ritual, none remember what came to pass afterwards. Neither what happened to Bahamut, nor why the realm was reborn. The haze that afflicted memories of calamity. People remember events prior to the moment, yes? If so, do you know if anyone was near Loiseau during the battle? Someone who may even spoken with him? Someone was near him, I'm afraid I do not know. He was atop the rise for the ritual while I was a good distance away on the front lines. My apologies. No, no, please don't apologize. You've shared a wealth of information and I couldn't ask for more. Well, if you're satisfied, then so am I. With that, I shall return to my duties. I look forward to reading the biography when it's finished. Now I have a grasp of events leading up to the Calamity, and yet... Oh, forgive me, I was deep in thought. In no small part due to your help, I've managed to learn a great deal. But there is still more that I wish to know. Might I trouble you to accompany me a little longer? If you're willing, please let me know. Then. Wonderful! Come, let's head to the Drowning Wench to discuss our next move. Our research proceeds pace, a pace so far. We've even learned things not found in literature. Tell me. Based on what you've heard from our interviewees, what is your your opinion of Loiseau? He had a difficult task. Indeed, from an Imperial invasion to rampage Primals to now Vandana's scheme, he had to contend with the toughest of problems. 
What struck me was how grateful the interviewees were to Loisois for bringing their nations together in cooperation. It was nothing short of necessary for our survival. Yet, knowing this, I can help but wonder. In his capacity as a tactician, it seems to me he had done more than enough by devising a plan and facilitating its ex execution. He went far beyond that, risking life and limb on the front lines for a land not his own. Perhaps he needed to be there for the ritual. Perhaps he felt a sense of duty. Even so, as noble as it is to desire to help others, what good is it if you end up sacrificing yourself? What was it that compelled Loisois to go to Katano, and what went through his mind as the battle unfolded? In order to do this biography justice, I feel I need to know these things. If Loisois had people near him at the time, perhaps he shared words with them in his final moments. Words that could provide some insights. Where to begin searching for such individuals, assuming they exist? Sorry friends, but I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Just so happens I know a bloke has served a monk twice or guard at Cartano. Truly, you know someone who was with him? I, and as far as I'm aware, he wasn't keeping it in fact a secret just for a good measure, though. Why do you want to speak with him? Francois's biography, hey? In that case, I reckon that bloke would be willing to cooperate. Or King comes is his name, and it was a lieutenant or the master. After the calamity, it turned to adventuring, so as to be a greater help to the common folk. A maelstrom officer to an adventure. We'd be most keen to speak with him. Where might he be found? When Orn dropped in the other day, it said he business at the motor by eight dry drops. If you're lucky, might as well be there. Understood. We're in your debt. Can't let this chance pass us by, Jude. Let's take ourselves to the dry docks at once. He's a Midlander, but um, well, nothing for him but to make inquiries. Let's split up for the task and meet again here. Okay.
you want you were you able to learn anything so a man who could be one bought a Nymea lily and then went to the mark of the spinner if we hurry there we might be able to find him let's go Begging your pardon, sir, but are you Lieutenant Oron Ginkum? Ginkum. I haven't been a lieutenant for years, but I. That's me. What can I do for you? I realize this is sudden, but. Stop reading. So you're writing Loise Loise's biography and want to hear my account as someone who was near on hand at Cartoon. There must be a reason that you are here too. The warrior of light who led us to victory in Operation Arcton. Very well, I will tell you my tale. Now then, where to begin? As you know, the battle was fought over the land where Dalamud was expected to fall. In the beginning, neither side was able to gain the upper hand. But when the Imperials deployed their Magitek armor, our ranks were thrown into disarray. Those charged with protecting Loisois, like me, could only watch the carnage from afar. And though our forces managed to hold out thanks to the adventure contingent, we sustained grievous casualties. But the real tragedy was what followed. As Dalamut hurtled towards us, it began shedding fragments of itself before finally bursting open to unleash the primal Bahamut. As all below looked on in shock, the battle completely forgotten, Bahamut took wind and spewed fire all over the land. Man and Magitek armor alike were set ablaze and sent flying like so many insects. I only realized that I had stopped breathing when a commanding voice broke my trance. You've done enough, Loisois told us. Now fly! Fly and save yourselves! But like my fellow guards, I wanted to remain. I couldn't charge into battle beside my comrades. At the very least, I would do my duty here and protect Loisois to the last. 
upon seeing us standing there not making to move, Loiseau smiled and spoke to us. If you would give your lives to protect something, then protect my hopes. Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope, bright and brilliant. So live, I bid you, and be among those who bear the light for others to follow. Those words awakened us to a greater purpose. If there was hope in my living, then I would live as Loisoua bid. No matter what, I would survive. And so, together with my fellows, I began making my retreat. Alas, we hadn't gotten far when an explosion erupted and sent us sprawling. I struggled to my feet just in time to see the enormous menacing silhouette of Bahamut looming over Loisoua. In the next instant he was enveloped in light, and that was the last thing I remember of him. Loisoua's final moment. Amidst that light, he looked to be smiling. What he was thinking in that moment I couldn't say, but one thing is certain. We all of us are alive, thanks to him. Hmm. Following the calamity, it was reported that Loiseau had defeated Bahamut and set about the land's miraculous regeneration. Do you believe that's his truth? Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope. What we've learned has reaffirmed my belief, Jude. The belief that Loiseau was not an all-powerful savior one reads about in tales, but merely an ordinary man. That man never forsook Eosia. No, he stood for this realm to the last. He and countless other brave souls, and saved it from becoming a scorched waste. Against unimaginable adversity he fought, and at the cost of his life, paved the way to a brighter future for us all. The least I can do in return is tell his story, spread his message that where there is life, there is hope. Thanks to your account, I believe I found an angle for the biography. I'm truly grateful. Would you care to offer a prayer as well? The prayer that the light of hope which was well preserved shall ever burn bright. Allow me to thank you again for recounting your experiences to us. Nay, it is I who owes you thanks for giving me the chance to share Loiseau's words. All these years I had avoided speaking at the moment of his passing out of respect. But it would not do to take the tale to my grave. Through the biography, it is my hope that his spirit will live on in all of us. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I shall resume my pilgrimage to the monks. 
Wherever your travels take you, I shall be praying for your safety. symbol of safe passage. As Loise was stood there in Cartino, I wonder if he likewise prays for someone's safety. At any rate, these interviews have yielded everything I had hoped for and more. Come, let's return to Olda. I'll have your reward for you at Olda at uh, Hall of Flames. Use one of these Immortal Flames tickets to get there. Free of charge and faster. I mean, faster as in I'm directly transported. Uh. Okay, here is Sananji. There you are! I ended up troubling you longer than I had intended, but it was a truly fruitful series of interviews. How fortunate that we could hear from those who lived that fateful time. While I still have many questions, the biography is beginning to take shape in my mind. I also feel as though I have attained a measure of closure. Loiseau fought simply as one of us, and he made that ultimate sacrifice that hope might endure. This I've come to realize and appreciate thanks to everyone's heartfelt testimonies. Now then, last but not least, I'd like to ask you for your thoughts on something. According to Orn, Loiseau smiled in his final moment. As he was enveloped in light, what do you imagine he held in his mind? The image of mankind thriving in the future. I see. I appreciate your thoughts. As I pen the biography, I'll be certain to remember your words. Well, sad though it is, it's time for us to part ways. I'll set to work on a draft, and I won't rest until the biography goes to print. Thank you for your, your for all your help, my friend. I couldn't have come this far without you. The man, the myth, the legend. And the frames. Okay, this is a symbol for the... Treasure. And she can... They went to the release of the new patch And here we have more Another quest to celebrate 10th anniversary Of Final Fantasy 14 Realm Reborn The Rising Beautiful decorations as, as always So let's talk to Kipi <laughs> Siblings Rising Well that just reminds me of Final Fantasy 16 If it reason. <laughs> oh, if it isn't you, it's always a pleasure, my friend. And how fortuitous that you should appear now, just when I'm in need of help again. Pray, hear me out. You see, my brother recently wrote saying that he wished me to meet in Oldham during the rising celebration. However, the appointed hour has come and gone, 
but I've seen neither hide nor hair from him. I've checked all the likely places in the city to no avail, and I'm beginning to worry. If it isn't too much trouble, might I ask you to help me find him? I'm in your debt. Now, my brother is a youth of 16 by the name of Nagi. He recently became an adventurer, something he had aspired to since he was little. Being an adventurer yourself, perhaps you know of him, if not cross paths. We met at the previous rising. Not only did you meet him, you helped him on his way, you say. What an amazing coincidence. Well, that being said, it doesn't necessarily mean you would know where he is now. If he isn't in the city though, chances are he went outside on some business. To begin with, I propose we split up and make inquiries in case someone has seen him. If you could focus on this area, I shall speak with those in the quicksand. Afterwards, let us reconvene by the entrance to the tavern. Okay. It's always lovely to listen to this song in the background with the echo. Silly with a harbor herring! If it isn't the adventurer who gave his gas a story for the ages by bringing that letter in the bottle way back when! So, what can Brown do for you this fine evening?
little fireworks. <laughs> ah, could have used the other door. I thought she was inside. Escorting a carriage for the minstrel, so that is the way of it. I suggested let us take ourselves to Blackbird Station and try searching in the vicinity. No sooner did I arrive than this man came running out of breath. Must be her brother. That has to be Nagi with me, Jude. Relief. I'll take a proper look at you once back in the city. I must say I was quite surprised to learn that you had met Jude. <laughs> My approval! back as well. I had a mind to pay the minstrel a visit in any case. <whistles> Ambrosia. Do I have to travel back to Ulva or are they gonna send us there automatically?
about health. Tell me, Nagi. All this time you have been working alone, even for dangerous tasks? That is what she believes, then I can't consent you to being an adventurer any longer. Return to our village and start over. I guess you missed a point, Nagi. You've developed a grave misconception. Until you recognize what it is, I can't in good conscience approve of your calling. If you can't accept this, if you wish to remain an adventurer, then you must win me over. And it begins with pondering why you first embark upon this path. Oh. He's not thinking straight. So sorry you had to see that here. Despite how it may have appeared, no one wants my brother to succeed more than I do. To succeed and be happy. After all, I know better than any how party works. Unless he changes his way, however, he's like to die somewhere out there. And even if he manages to stay alive, he would only know a nodule's life. That's why I didn't go out of my way to be gentle when addressing his wounds. You could just focus on what actually matters. Instead, he obsesses about gaining my approval and compares himself to others. <sighs> what drives us? Ah, rising phoenix whistle and me a poopery. Truth be told, no matter what Nagi wants to do, it is my intent to support him. And he's, it's his life, after all, and no one else's. It is my place to interfere. Be it that as it may, if he's sabotaging his own aspirations with his obsession for my approval, I can s simply stand idly by and watch. Loath though I am to impose, until my brother has found his answer, I trouble you to keep an eye on him? Thank you. Now then, on a related matter, I must pay a visit to the Weaver's Guild, but I will see you again and on. If you'll excuse me. Still missing the point. <laughs> oh, 
About to face of the Adventurers Guild. What will she say without, you know, putting it, you know, directly? He's got to figure it out by himself, after all. Okay. <laughs> Mamadi. <laughs> Since I started off in Olda, she was one of the first faces I got to know in Final Fantasy XIV.
There he is. Okay, that's the one. to find me. My apologies for taking so long. So Nagi, were you able to find the answer? An explorer is assembling an escort for an expedition. Certainly sounds exciting.
since you've given up on trying to do everything alone? Didn't you just say you didn't need my approval? But to be clear, I never actually intended to stop you. Do you remember what you once told me, Nagi? Shortly before the calamity struck? about adventurers, do you? Well, that's as fine as an aspiration as any. But do you know what kind of adventurer you wish to become? A hero like in the tales, perhaps? Boy to spurn help for want of my approval. I couldn't bear to see it, and in order to bring you to your senses, I may have spoken a little sternly. As an adventurer, you'll experience no small amount of hardships, but you chose your path because you wanted to be free. So don't let yourself be shackled by expectation, be it your own or that of others, and instead take things as they come. So as long as you are true to yourself and recognize your limits, you'll surely find a way forward. And remember, not even heroes can accomplish everything alone. Relying on others doesn't make you a less adventurer. If anything, the freer we are, the more we need to look out for one another. And that, I believe, is the essence and beauty of adventuring. Wouldn't you agree, Jude? Wholeheartedly. Comments. I had a mate for you thinking it was past time you had something better. I couldn't have asked for a better person to watch over my little brother. I appreciate everything you've done for him and look forward to meeting you again. Be it for a story or something else. With that, we take our leave of you. Till next time.
Let's listen to it. There he goes. <laughs> it's tradition. Gorgeous. By morning light, the journey starts, the thrill of hope within our hearts. And westerly wind to river song into the world where we belong. Into the west. But fields of white and azure sky, sunset storm a crimson fire, jewels a glitter on pitch black veil, a new day dawn so calls the tale. By eternal wind we carry on, boldly towards a golden morn, with memories as a guiding star shining our steps both near and far. Lovely. There we have a firework. Thank you 
for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. It's been 8 for me so far. <laughs> Yay! Happy anniversary, Realm Reborn! Oh, we can read the letters. Check the latches. Oh wow! This has been quite a long, well, actually, couple of quests. Showing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's try to go quickly by then. So you can take a look if you wish to.
Spectrum Citizen. Advertising spread. Indeed we are moved by your work, by the amazing music. Finally, a letter from an adventurer. to that. Damn it, <laughs>
Okay, now let's kill a site. Horizon. It's the closest one. So we can see our new mount. quest event is the celebration of the 10th anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV uh, Realm Reborn and we have as one of the rewards this beautiful mount. I hope you enjoyed this guide. Uh, if you did, don't forget to comment, leave a like and subscribe. This is Princess Farron signing out. Take care and good gaming. Bye bye.